This episode of Self Helpless is brought to you by Zola. Zola is reinventing the wedding registry and planning process to make the happiest moment in couples' lives even happier. To start your free wedding website and also get $50 off your registry on Zola, go to zola.com slash helpless. Thanks to BetterHelp for supporting Self Helpless. Visit betterhelp.com, that's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, and join the over 500,000 people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. Self Helpless listeners receive a special offer of 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash self helpless. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Self Helpless. I'm Kelsey Cook. I'm Taylor Tomlinson. I'm Delaney Fisher. And today we're interviewing one of you guys again, one of our helpsters. So cool. Uh, we're interviewing Monica. She wrote in to our uh, self helpless podcast at gmail.com. We answered one of her emails on Patreon. Yeah. And she was spilling all kinds of good stuff about becoming a mom that people just aren't really open about. Yeah. She just told us the most hilarious story in that email about <laughs> peeing her pants at work because she was coughing. Yeah. And that, apparently that's what happens after you have a baby. Yeah. You're just a friggin' 24 hour soak zone walking around. <laughs> just a splash zone walking. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. And so just a disclaimer for this episode, we are not trying to deter people from having children or getting pregnant, but yeah. this does contain some graphic content about what you can expect if you want to have a baby yeah mm -hmm. during pregnancy childbirth after. right after childbirth all that stuff nothing will deter taylor i feel <laughs> pretty safe in saying that like literally <sighs> nothing could be said that would make you change your mind yeah. only climate change <laughs> only climate that's change. literally all <laughs> and it's because i love my unborn baby so much Aww. i don't want to put them through that that's so sweet <laughs> that's it though <laughs> so yeah we hope you guys enjoy this conversation with monica as much as we did it's, oh we learned it's so amazing much. yeah she's the best so here is our convo with her Monica, you're the best. Thank you so much for coming on the show and be willing to talk about this stuff. You're welcome. I'm excited <laughs> to share it. It needs to be talked about more. <laughs> yes, it does. Uh, do you want to you want to kick it off with one of your favorite or least favorite quotes? Yeah, so it's my favorite quote. I have it hanging up in my cube at work. It's a little lengthy, so bear with me. So it goes to laugh often and much to win the respect of intelligent people and the affection of children. To earn the appreciation of onyx critics and endure the betrayal of false friends. To appreciate beauty, to find the best in others, to leave the world a bit better, whether it be by a healthy child, a garden patch, or a redeemed social condition. To know that even one life has breathed an easier life because of you. You have succeeded. And it's oh. Ralph Waldo Emerson. Hell yeah. Love Damn, it. That is great. I love that's, that. That's a good checklist for your life. Yeah. That's a really <laughs> that, that is. Yeah. Uh, that is yeah, solid. It basically, yeah, it encompasses everything, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, so do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, your your backstory, just you as the wonderful mother that you are, anything that you want to share to uh, with our listeners? Yeah. So I recently had my first child about eight months ago. And yes. I thank you. And I thought for sure, like I kept on telling everyone, I've got 15 nieces and nephews. Whoa. I know about, you know, having a kid and it's going to be fine. And then I had uh, my son, who we call the bug, and <laughs> I was like, oh, wow, motherhood is a lot more about physical, like, commitment and burden than I thought before. Maybe not burden, but just much more physical than I had anticipated. Yeah. Um, so that was something that as I continued to talk to more and more people in my network of friends and family members, they're like, oh yeah, that totally happened to me. I'm like, why didn't anyone tell me about this? Mm -hmm. um, so just wanted to, you know, talk a little bit more about that. And I think I wrote you guys on a particularly interesting day when I, I was, wrote a story and I was a little bit saucy about it, but I had just come home from work because I had coughed so hard at my desk. Oh, and yeah. You, oh, yeah. yeah. I had coughed so hard at my desk, I peed myself in the office. Where, like, <laughs> people right. Pee. 
it was all over my chair, like the front of my dress. Oh, and it was so right. incredibly embarrassing. So I was like, you know who think would probably think this is funny? And I immediately thought of you guys and typed up an email. Uh, and we all. did. And you we were right. Hard. <laughs> I mean, we felt terribly, but we also laughed really hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would have laughed too. So and the <laughs> ironic thing is they, they're redoing our office. So they like took all of our chairs and put <laughs> them in like one giant area. And I'm like, someone's going to get my pee chair. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, oh, man. Oh, yeah. We all have moments like that. But this is th- these are things that people do are not really forthcoming about when you are talking about having kids. Yeah. And I love the fact that you're going to, you're willing to share all the embarrassing weird shit out there. Um, so <laughs> what are some of the things that you would talk about? And then other moms would say stuff like, Oh my gosh, me too. Well, a lot of it was around like the first one that was the biggest one for me and was hardest was you go through nine months of pregnancy and you're, you know, you can't eat this because you uh it could affect the baby or you know you can't sleep on your back because there's a vein in your back that could murder your baby like there's just all this yeah there's just all this stuff that you your body's not your own and you do it because you know it's going to be healthy for the baby and you're like okay after labor i'm gonna get my body back and then it is just a huge letdown when you realize it's really only just beginning if you're doing um you have a, if you're doing breastfeeding, like you are on a, an every three hour timetable where if you want to do something within three hours or longer than three hours, you can't because someone is solely responsible. You're responsible for someone's life. Like the only nourishment the kid gets is because you're there to sustain it. Oh, um, so much pressure. That, yeah. 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 No, going that to Avengers hard. movies for you. <laughs> Those are always over three hours long. <laughs> yeah, it was just, I mean, that part was, I think, breastfeeding as a whole and then just the burden on your body and how taxing it is. At, at some point, I was like, did everyone else feel like they need a new back? Like, my back oh. was always hurting. Uh, yeah. And it makes sense because, you know, your core and your abs support your back so much and they just get wrecked. Like after you have labor, I couldn't get out of bed um, unless I had some assistance because the physical act of getting like sitting up from laying down was hard to do because my core was gone. Oh, jeez. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's so, uh, your head. So did you have a C-section? No, I had natural. Okay. Because I know, you know, when Which people have C section, it's like sawing through your abs, oh. and that that's like yeah. a whole crazy long recovery of regrowing them. I think is that <laughs> that's probably not yeah. medically right, but you know what I mean, like making them strong again. My, yeah, my best friend just had a baby, and she actually had a C section, and the um, the scar and everything very minimal, and her recovery was actually way quicker than expected. She was wow. pretty fine, oh. but I know that my mom had a C-section in 1990, right. and she's like, that shit was not the same. Like they Whoa. have, they have had so many improvements, and oh. I mean, my mom's scar is huge. She said the recovery was horrible like eight weeks long of really intense pain so they've obviously made a lot of good updates since then because my best my best friend melissa was like yeah the next day totally fine walking around with the baby what? all this stuff next i mean day. the next day i saw her walk around the hospital like nothing had happened like what you're gonna rip something uh-huh. sit down <laughs> sit your ass down um so yeah i'm i'm i was shocked to hear about that yeah. because they've i feel like people have always made c-sections sound really really scary yeah um yeah but yeah that was that was fascinating to find out so your back hurts i also from from my 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 best friend melissa said like her wrist started hurting like she's got like carpal tunnel stuff what? now don't know what that's yes. from can you expand on yes. that <laughs> and so 100 percent, that was something i did not expect at all like there were times where and i didn't know if it was because i am like you see all these breastfeeding videos and it's like girls who have b and c cups or like smaller boobs but I have much larger boobs and then put it on the, you know, you're making milk and your boobs can double or can add to breast cup sizes. Holy shit. Oh, like wow. you see videos and people just like are out in the restaurants and stuff like that in public and they just like whip it out and the kid's fine. Well, I had to have like a pillow set up in a certain way and wow. he had, I had to have 
him in what they call like a football hold. Um, and nah. then because, yeah, because I was so well endowed, <laughs> I had to <laughs> use one hand behind his head to like make sure that his head was in the right spot, but then push back on my boob so that it didn't suffocate him. Oh my so, God. What? I can picture that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So like this whole time, you, you know, 20 to 30 minute sessions of breastfeeding every three to four hours. And wow. after a while, it is just, I couldn't pull like the cover up to cover myself when I went to bed because I couldn't pinch my <gasps> pinky and my index finger. Wow. Oh my God. And that's just from hold, holding your baby and holding your boobs basically constantly yeah. in that position? Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. These really are things like, they don't tell you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it would like radiate up your forearm and in my back. Oh. Uh, it was just that the physical discomforts of breastfeeding, let alone the like someone is gnawing on your nipple for hours a day. <laughs> that yeah. part. Has the bit, did the baby just, ever like bite your nipple? He, <laughs> Kelsey's face yeah. when she asked that question. <laughs> I've never seen anybody l- like less interested in having children. <laughs> Is the baby well, like, does it bite your nipple? Yeah, it's in its mouth, probably. <laughs> but it doesn't have m- teeth yet. I know, but like, <laughs> yeah, did it hurt? <laughs> um, There were times, yes, because he was an aggressive eater. Like, there were times oh, where I would take a video or, where he would, like, latch on and shake his head back and forth and, like, Arr! And I was no, like, like a dog like, with a pork down. chop. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. My gosh. Um, I feel lightheaded. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't imagine we stopped. He rejected the boob when I went back to work. And so he just was bottle fed for the rest. And now he has teeth. And I'm like, I can't imagine with as aggressive as an eater he is in <laughs> teeth. I can't, it would not work out. Oh, mm-hmm. my gosh. So are you are you like pumping? Is it formula time? What, where are you at right now? I did six months of solely breast milk. Okay. Um, so we did pumping uh, about for so six months and now we're transitioned to 100% formula and it is like getting my life back. Wow. <laughs> it's amazing. I can't even imagine. I know that, uh, yeah, like even, even when you think you're kind of, you have your freedom back, I know that there's the whole pumping and dumping thing. Like if you have a, a couple drinks, you shouldn't be breastfeeding that day or something because of the alcohol content in the breast milk. So it's like, you're still, even though they're outside of your body, you still have to do yeah. all of these things. It's like, it, it seems like it takes a while before you really get kind of your, that individual individuality back a bit. Getting your body back just yeah. for you. Yeah. Um, but also yeah. I heard that the pumping and dumping thing is, you know, it, it's probably not a big deal, but I'm not sure. Yeah. So <laughs> I did a lot of research on that and there's not a ton of studies that are, have been done on it. Wow. And recently, I forget, it was another country outside of the United States who had done some research on it and they were like basically the reason why they say don't drink is because you don't want to be tipsy or buzzed or drunk while taking care of a child but Um, they found that there wasn't as many um, like it didn't leak into the milk and make the child drowsy Oh, it was yeah so they were like we recommend you know one one drink a, a night for you know five days a week or whatever no more than that and then um they said that because they didn't want to deter people from continuing to breastfeed because breast milk has such great qualities in it and it's good for the baby Uh, they didn't want people to be like well i can't drink or i'm still not myself i want some part of myself back Mm, Uh, so yeah the power of booze (laughs) just do what you gotta do but But please give the kid the breast milk (laughs) oh i did not not, so basically that's really only out there to basically say hey don't be too drunk about around your baby like that's pretty much the gist because i feel like anything i've heard from other people is like oh yeah you pump and dump because you don't want to get the baby drunk or something crazy and i'm like when do these moms get a freaking break why can't they have a few glasses of wine and go to bed and not worry about this crap Mm -hmm. um so that actually makes me feel a lot better (laughs) Um, yeah yeah and now a word from our sponsors 
This episode of Self Helpless is brought to you by Zola. Zola is reinventing the wedding registry and planning process to make the happiest moment in couples' lives even happier. Zola is the easiest way to plan your wedding and register. You can join 500,000 couples who have used Zola. Start with a free wedding website. It's so easy. It takes just minutes to set up. There's over 100 beautiful wedding website designs to choose from that fit any couple's style and every type of wedding. Then you get to build your dream registry at Zola, which is such a fun part. The Zola store has the widest selection of gifts at all different price points there's something for every guest to give and you guys know i just got married about a month and a half ago zola made it so easy i loved having one place i could go to to like keep track of everything and to have an online registry for us that was the easiest way to do it so we love zola thank you so much uh, to start your free wedding website and also get 50 dollars off your registry go to zola.com slash helpless that's spelled zola.com slash helpless to start your free Free wedding website and get fifty dollars off your registry on Zola. And is there something interfering with your happiness or is preventing you from achieving your goals? Well, BetterHelp can help you. <laughs> uh, BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating in under twenty four hours. Seriously, I've been using BetterHelp for almost a year now. I love my therapist. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It is professional counseling done securely online. There is a broad range of expertise in BetterHelp's counselor network, which may not be locally available in many areas. This service is available for clients worldwide. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is also available. Visit their website and read testimonials that are posted daily. I'm telling you, you guys, it's so convenient. I have my sessions on my couch, in my bed, while yeah. I'm at sitting at my dining room table. It's great. I don't have to leave my home and I'm getting really great quality advice and, and care. Yeah. So seriously, check it out. BetterHelp wants you to to start living your happier life today, visit betterhelp.com slash self helpless. That's better H E L P and join the over 500,000 people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. Special offer for self helpless listeners gets 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash self helpless. Now back to the show. What was like the most horrifying thing that happened to you <laughs> that you're just like, what? Yeah. How is there? Nobody told me at all. Yeah. Um, Besides the pork chop nipples. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I mean, yeah. that seems like an all time. Besides low. that. And the carpal tunnel and the back pain. Yeah. yeah. Besides every Besides everything thing. you've already said. <laughs> if it's one of the things you already um, said, that's fine. <laughs> I'm just curious. Well, what was one, the thing that made you go? Well, the one thing that, like, I didn't expect, and maybe I am just naive about it, is from the hours of 5 to 7, for basically six weeks, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m., my body would just, like, feel like I got hit by a truck. Oh. And it's, like, the hormonal fluctuations. So, like, those were the hours when I had, you know, baby blues, but I was lucky enough not to have postpartum. Mm. And we have a dog and the dog before our son was born was like our child. <laughs> and, uh, when we brought the baby home, you know, she couldn't be around <laughs> the dog or the dog couldn't be around William. I remember in that five to seven hour, I just felt so bad and the dog wasn't hanging around me cause she didn't know what to do. And I just started like bawling at my husband. I'm like, Aww. Wrigley doesn't even love me anymore. <laughs> just the body aches of, of having a kid and like every muscle in your body works when you're going through labor. And I don't know if that's just something I was naive about or didn't think. I mean, obviously, it's the hardest workout you'll ever do in your life. Yeah. But I just did not put two and two together. What about like having to wear like diapers and what's yeah. the, what happened with the, your basement, <laughs> the situation downstairs? It is just wrecked. Um, now oh. it's better, but the diapers take as many of the mesh underwear that they have at the hospital home and just live in them. They're amazing. <laughs> oh. Hot tip. <laughs> Listen up. Hot tip. Get out your notebooks. Yeah. Whatever, Steal. Whatever's in your room, they can't reuse, so just take it all. Um, oh, good that is a great the, tip. Yeah, best thing ever. I mean, and they've got these... It's so like stealing from a buffet little, at um, the end of the night. <laughs> yeah. like, they're just going to throw these rolls away. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
exactly. Uh, but they have these like little ice pack things that you snap and then um, they're like ice pack pads and you can put those in your underwear and sit mm. on them and that is the best thing ever. Or you can go online and they've got recipes kind of for what they call pad sickles. And it's basically, you know, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, giant pads, like <laughs> overnight pads. You put like aloe in them and then tux me- medicated ointment, like little round circles. Those things what? are so life Are stickers. you like, like sitting on a waterbed? Is it like a ice cube? Is it a frozen pad? What does this actually mean? So the ones that they have at the hospital that you crack open, it's kind of like an ice pack pad. And the ones <laughs> that you make like the pad sickles at home are just like, you literally put them in the freezer and pull them out. Wow. So you're not getting freezer burn or anything because you got something in between the icicle and your your goods? Okay. Wow. It is. I can't tell you how amazing that is, but (laughs) I will say so. I was lucky enough to get a second degree tear. And that means this is at least what my doctor told me. I'm obviously not a doctor, but it's lucky. Second degree. (laughs) Second degree is means that it goes through your top layer of skin and then it rips like through the top layer of muscle. <gasps> and she said it does like an L shape. So the outside rips down with like the long part of, of the L and then the muscle part rips like the, I guess you'd say the bottom of the L. Oh, and my God, woman. Yeah. <laughs> I am so sorry. Yeah. It's super fun. Did um, you need stitches? But. Yeah, I had to have, I don't even know how many stitches I got, but I will say that um, they give you stool softeners and drink a ton of water because everybody talks about online, if you'd research it, the first poop, like, oh my gosh, so scary. (sighs) Definitely scary. Not going to lie. Oh no. Oh Oh, no. Because it could rip everything open? Yes. Oh, and and then it gets in all your wounds. Oh Oh, my God. Oh wow. Yes. So definitely make sure that you are drinking the water that they say in a stool softener twice a day. In PSA, and like if you're someone who doesn't wipe correctly, you better start wiping the right way, like front to back. Right. Start Dude, that practice now. I have a question. <laughs> when you when you wipe, do you stay seated <laughs> on the toilet or do you stand up to wipe? I'm a sitter. Yeah, most people know, are, I, I think. think yeah, I don't. I never heard of that before. <laughs> you know, un- until You're on this, team Taylor. <laughs> yeah, until this uh, this pair of hoverers <laughs> revealed on the podcast that they they stand up to wipe and and remove tampons and all kinds of stuff. I don't know what they're doing. I'm like, how do you get to everything? It's like you, you're skiing. Exactly. You're it's just a squat, and so it spreads. And you just you got full yeah. range of motion. Full range. You got you got several angles you can go at it from, not just the one. What? But several <laughs> angles. You're go- okay. So you're wiping. <laughs> you're wiping front to back from the back. Is that what you're saying? A um, reach around. Exactly. Yeah. Back what here. Said. Yeah, I go behind from behind, but it's front to back. Okay, but sometimes... You guys are athletes. <laughs> <laughs> what? Sorry for this crazy tangent, Monica, but this is like... No, a pregnant heated or thing. not, this is important. <laughs> <laughs> this is a heated debate we're having. Oh, my gosh. So, okay, I have a question. So, Monica, so you, you tour, but I've also heard that they will just snip the, the woman beforehand. Why didn't they do that for you? Like, what, what's the difference? How do they figure that out? So my OB was a, is a woman, and I friggin' love her. And I asked her about that. I'm like, do you guys do a episiotomy? That's, that's what it's what called. They, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And she Snipping was like, a woman. absolutely not. We don't oh. do that anymore. She's like, generally, these days, it's men, do- like male doctors who do it, because oh. they find that there's less damage when you tear as opposed to when they just cut you. Mm. Wow. And those dudes are still going around snipping people, huh? Yeah, and she's like, and of course, it would be a dude that did it. Oh, Edward Scissorhands up in there. Oh, my god, <laughs> man woman haters. Wow. But I will say, you know, like, caring, terrible. Hurts real bad. Hemorrhoids, worse. Oh. Like, I think I, the hemorrhoids, I can't even begin. It's like shitting glass. Like, oh, just, oh, 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 my, oh my, my God. God. I, I think... 
<laughs> explain again what hemorrhoids are because I always think I know and then I don't think I get confused I know. between them them and like polyps and stuff. Is that I like mean, another if yeah, you could so explain that too, sounds great. <laughs> yeah. I'll pull out my PhD. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's when the blood vessels on the inside of your colon, like right around the rectum, they burst. So when you're in labor, they're like, just pretend like you're taking a poop, like push like you're taking a Ew. poop. And it's mm. the exact, I mean, it, that changed labor, active labor for me. Like it helped progress things along so much better, but there's so much pressure that goes on. And that's why a lot of people get hemorrhoids is because there's so much pressure all in that area that the veins burst and it's just Holy the worst. Did you poop when you had your baby? My husband won't answer my question. Oh, <laughs> that's a yes. That's, that's a, a good yes. Man. That's a yes. Oh, <laughs> good man button. That's a good guy. Yeah, but I I don't know if I did because I didn't see it, but I'm pretty sure I did. Right. And I will say, like, that was big. I was, I had William in January and we were, uh, we live uh, away from all of our family. So I was like, let's make a holiday dinner. I was like, oh, I should probably not make corn because uh. if I go into labor, ah! <laughs> I don't want that to read. Think it ahead. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Oh my oh, God. No lettuce, no corn. Wow. You're too okay. funny. Yeah. So did you have pain medication or not during labor? I did an epidural and it was, I, I mean, more power to the women who want to do it naturally, but I, that was the best thing ever. Yeah. And one thing that I didn't know is so I got there and I was six centimeters dilated, having contractions Oh my gosh! and they're like, okay, we need to test your blood to see if you're a candidate for an epidural. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? I just thought I got to tell you, like, I want an epidural and you can just give it to me. I like, no, didn't know how to run for brother. office. Yeah. yeah. What? Yeah. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, so I not know. everybody qualifies for an epidural? Apparently. Luckily, oh. I did because oh I gosh. don't know what I mentally would have done. Well, <laughs> and why they were like, they do well, that before, like way beforehand? Yeah. That was one of the big surprises that I had. I was like, uh, I did not know that that was not even an option or something on the table yeah wow so if you can get ahead of, get that ahead of time people should do that i didn't know that was a thing so that's probably a good tip for thank people you for sharing like, that yeah. that's very helpful find out is if it you blood type what what's what is it that qualifies you for it i can't remember exactly like at that point they were just there was people surrounding me like yeah there's a lot going on and, oh my god yeah and i'm i want to say it was something about like white blood cell counts or something to that effect but they were like yeah we're gonna run your test and then we'll see if we can give you an epidural no it's good just Lord. not what you wanted to hear yeah oh way to dump that at the last minute like that's oh wow that sounds very stressful okay so what does a contraction feel like and what does giving birth feel like Ooh, with yeah. an epidural like what is that <laughs> Oh, I can't even wrap my head around it. Contractions? I've always had really bad menstrual cramps, so it just kind of felt like that. And okay. by the time I got to the hospital, they were like, holy crap, you're already six centimeters dilated. And I didn't feel like anything was too crazy. I'm very lucky in that way. But it, so it just feels like lower on your belly, um, like menstrual cramps. And then it comes in waves and one of the nurses was like just imagine riding a wave like it's gonna peak and then it'll it'll come down and it just like that part was intense they got mm. me after they took all my blood work they took me to the labor and delivery room they're like do you want to go to the bathroom before you're basically bedridden and they put a catheter in you after you get the epidural Ugh. and mm -mm -mm. i was like okay great i'll go in there and so I go in there with my IV and I sit down on the back on the toilet and there's something also that I didn't know before. Not everyone's water breaks one, only like 10% of women's water break. Really? And 10%? Yeah. So that's one of the things like the movies are all just jokes. Like wow. that nothing I feel like that happens in the movies happens in real life, at least in my experience. They break it in the hospital when you get in basically. They didn't break mine because I tested positive for something called strep B. Um, which can cause infection in the baby. And so you have to get like antibiotics in your system before like, you can actually start pushing. Oh, uh, so the strep Lord. B doesn't transfer to the kid. Jeez. So, um, oh, so you can give birth without your water breaking at all. It breaks before the baby comes through the canal. 
Okay, gotcha. It's not like in the movies where everybody's like, oh my gosh, I just peed myself. Now I'm in active labor. Like, that doesn't happen. Yeah, right. I just ruined my Jimmy Choo's. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Very sex in the city. Oh, wow. um, is there a reason you chose to do natural birth um, instead of a C-section? Well, I think they, um, they only give you a C-section if you need one, right? Or do they let you choose? I think you can request it I now. You can? You can. Yeah. I, was like, yeah, I didn't you know that. It. Oh, well, then in that case, (laughs) you can like schedule it. Yeah. Oh, then I'm going to get pregnant tomorrow. (laughs) I'm going to have my baby at Tuesday at 5 p.m. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a reason why you you went that route instead? Well, for me, I think it was more of just hearing, I I don't know, hearing about the process of cutting through all of my muscle. um, That was just, (laughs) I that didn't sit well with me. So I, at one point, they thought I was going to have to have a C-section because um, he was breech, which means that his head was up instead of down in like the pel- in my pelvis area. Mm-hmm. So they thought, and then he flipped on his own, which was good. Um, but I don't know. I just felt like human bodies are de- like women's bodies are designed to have natural labor. So I wanted to go that route. Okay. Mm-hmm. Wow. Oh my gosh. So oh gosh. were you? Were you? surprised in either direction by it being easier than you thought it would be or even harder than you thought it would be the like just the actual childbirth i asked my sister about like would you rather be pregnant or or labor and she was like i'd go through labor every day of the week as opposed to being pregnant for nine months really why is that that? (laughs) well and then as when we when i went through it i was like i totally get what she means because the epidural i mean seriously it's the best. Like, so when I got into the bathroom, when they were like, go to the bathroom before this starts, I couldn't get off the toilet because contractions were coming so quick and so hard. Mm-hmm. I like couldn't stand up. So they had to come and put me in the bed. And as soon as that epidural went in, which, you know, has a little bit of a pinch and there's a, like a, an electrifying jolt that goes down your knees. But then after that, it is like, I took a nap. Like I took a nap while my body was in active labor because oh wow, your body just like fully, it, it's seriously the best. I could not recommend epidurals more. <laughs> wow. Um, Good to know. So that part was, and I couldn't feel anything. And the pushing there towards the very end while like the head was, his head was out and his shoulders were getting ready to come out. That part was hard. And I grunted like, Oh, but other than that, I didn't think it was, too terrible and i feel like i'm very lucky in that aspect because there was a lady so i get my epidural we're turning down the light like midnight and i'm watching tv my husband's trying to take a nap i'm trying to take a nap and it's quiet in our room and then all of a sudden i just hear like blood curdling screams like blood curdling screams coming from down the hall and i my back is to my husband who's sitting in the chair and (laughs) said to him like you think she has an epidural (laughs) (laughs) oh good god oh my gosh i was so nervous but (sighs) yeah it was just i that is the other thing like a friend of mine was like my sister went through natural labor and hearing her in the sounds that came out of her body oh, when she went through natural God. label without a girl, she's like, I would never want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, so does it feel like pressure? Like if the epidural kind yeah. of numbs a lot, do you just kind of like feel like there's pressure happening down there? Yeah. An intense okay. pressure, just like right in between your legs. Okay. And it, it increases as every contraction comes. Okay. And so when they, when the contractions they can see on the monitor start to come, you basically hold your legs up and you just push out a poop real hard. Oh, wow. <laughs> so wait, wow. what was, so what are some things about pregnancy specifically that made it so hard and make you go, Oh yeah, I'd much rather do childbirth than pregnancy every day. Yeah. Good question. The coolest part about pregnancy is when the kid, like, starts to move and you can feel the kicking totally great. Yeah. But, like, I had super bad heart burn, heartburn. You can't sleep. You're just uncomfortable. The one thing that I hated the most is 
it felt like at some point he was going to be like the alien in the movie Alien that like oh. jumps out of the guy's <laughs> oh. stomach. Oh my god! And it just was like this intense pressure at the like the very top, like right under your boobs. Just oh my gosh! And you can't eat a lot of food because there's just no space. Like one day. My husband and I went on a, a baby moon, and there are these chili quiles at this place that I oh. love. And I was like, I'm going to eat all of them. I and I ate all of them, and then I wanted to die the rest oh, of the day. Oh, <laughs> it hurts so bad. And you're like, the things people say to you, like body image, I've never, like, I've always struggled with my body. And the people just feel like they can say whatever the hell they want to you because you're pregnant. Oh, and wait, I just started what? like, what kind of stuff? Are you having triplets? Oh, what? Um, God. Uh, what? Yeah. People I got, are still like, doing that uh, shit. Yeah, and that's when I responded. I know the dude, and I responded back to him, and I was like, I don't, I'm not, but are you? Like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, girl. Ah, I can't believe people are still doing it, that stuff. So that part was hard, and just, I mean, it's 24-7. Like, you don't get a break from feeling uncomfortable, mm. which was really hard. You're a warrior. You Seriously. really are. I salute you. <laughs> Yeah, seriously. Anybody who's still being a dick to women, listen to this episode and yeah. go fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah. Don't say anything well, even mildly offensive to a pregnant woman. Oh my yeah. god, that woman is in the trenches. Exactly. And this guy, he kept on being like, "Well, you know, I went through two kids, and they had, no, he, you they had didn't. The what? <laughs> yeah, uh. they had to spend time in the NICU, and I'm like, I get that. Like that is okay. Now NICU I feel like a dick. Parenting is hard. Yes, right. But like, you didn't grow an ear. Yeah, right. Like, yeah. But that part, like, grow, the growing, and I I say all this stuff because it's true and it happened to me, but at the same time, like, when I was out of the hospital and back home and, you know, you're in getting in your groove and you're looking down at this, like, human and you're like, I made your bones. <laughs> like, oh, so weird. I Easy. made you. <laughs> Yeah, so weird, weird, but awesome. Yeah, so so this was all worth it for you to have to have all that and now have your baby. Yes, but I will say that we want another kid, and I'm like, man, I don't know if I want to go through that again. But I also know that the end game is awesome. Right, Mm. that's a great perspective. Yeah, it's just hard. Yeah. And how do you feel about like your, your body image stuff now after having a baby? Like. Does it really bounce back? Does it never? Is it never going to be like that again? Like, how how are you feeling about all that? Mm-hmm. I feel like I was just a dumpster of eating when I was breastfeeding because you're just expending so many calories making mm-hmm. milk. Mm-hmm. Um, so, see, I like the sound I of that just, part. That, yeah, that sounds fun. That sounds fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that part's super fun. Um, <laughs> but I stopped breastfeeding two months ago and I still have not lost the baby weight. And it's hard because, you know, every morning you get ready and you look at all of these clothes in your closet and you're like, I love that dress. Can't wear it because I won't fit into it. Mm-hmm. I love that piece of clothing. And that part is like, that part's hard. And in my job, I have to be on video a lot. So I'm like, great. Mm-hmm. This is just, it, it's way harder than I thought it would be because you see like, videos of people or things on social media now and this is the person you know three months post pregnancy and they look exactly the same as they did before they had a kid i'm like not for everyone right yeah. maybe if you have a personal <laughs> trainer nutritionist and stylist <laughs> yeah yeah and, and photos Tegan. photoshop yeah. and photoshop like yeah. yeah that's not realistic at all wow mm-hmm. and i'm sure there's a degree of like you know it, it, did you feel that sense of like power and you know that crazy thing women talk about when they're pregnant where they're just like like you said like i'm i made and i made you i made your bones you're like my <laughs> body did that like i'm sure that's like this whole amazing like poignant experience too yeah and it's weird to have those running parallel or they're at the same time you know yeah. like you're, you're looking at your body and you're like i did so much like my body was designed to do this and I made this human and it's so awesome. But at the same time, like and having positive feelings about that, but at the same time, then looking in the mirror and being like, I don't look the exact same as I used to. And the negative that comes with that, that part's mm. hard. Yeah. yeah. And then the whole, this whole concept of like mom brain. Okay. So what is this? Is this because of a sleep deprivation? Is this because of hormones? Like what is that exactly? Can you expand on that? Yeah. I thought it was a joke and I would like to publicly apologize to everyone I judged in my head. (laughs) Um, 
because it is so true. So mom brain in my example is, and it can happen for up to two years after having a kid. I have to speak a lot in my role at work and I was giving a presentation and I was asking someone if they could bring a cooler, like we were going to do an event and I needed someone to bring a cooler. I could not think of that word. So I sat there and I was like, Mm -hmm. It's this square that you open (laughs) and you put ice and drinks in it. And like, you just can't think of words. Or I've had friends, like, they would put stuff that belonged in the refrigerator in the pantry or vice versa. Like, it just, you can't think of words. And it is a physical thing. Like, they've done scans on people's brains while they watch their kid like them interacting with their own kid and their brain physically changes so, and it happens with dudes, with men too so is this because you're just exhausted trying to keep this thing alive at all times or <laughs> is it is it hormonal like do, do, do we know i'm probably it's probably both of them yeah. honestly yeah i mean the exhaustion that is just I, there's no it's the most exhausted you'll ever be <laughs> wow. and you got your mind just doesn't fire the same way that it used to before which is super hard when you go back to work because you've been gone for so long and you feel out of like the loop of things like I in my role I felt like I knew what was going on with this project and I knew you know the history of this and then now there's a three-month gap and I'm supposed to pick up where I was but also try to pump at work and then you know think about what am I going to do when I get home and I need to pump two more times at home and get ready for the next day and I can't think of words like cooler (laughs) yeah that's that's just was a lot um so did you did you know that you wanted kids before you had uh William yes okay I had always always wanted kids like being my mom was always what I wanted to do That's awesome. Yeah, that's I love that. So, what would be your advice to people who are on the fence about having children? You can never prepare yourself. Mm, yeah. <laughs> um, there's no way, and people say like it's totally different with your own kid. And I always thought that was kind of a little cliche, but it's so true. Mm. Like, just watching your your kid experience the world, there's just something so awe inspiring about that. I I don't know if I could give any advice for someone who maybe has thought they don't ever want kids and maybe want them because I just have always wanted them. Right. You know, it's such a personal thing. Yeah. People like I, my husband and I talk about all the time, like sometimes you hear people who are in marriages that are maybe going south or relationships that are going south and they say like, well, let's have a baby and that'll fix things. Like I can't fathom how that is possible to Mm. fix things. Like, Sure it, it has really to tests be, you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does. Because unconditional love for this, like the first couple of months of that kid's life, it doesn't respond to anything you do. Mm-hmm. So you have to love it unconditionally, yet it can be super frustrating because you don't know what's going on. They can't tell you what's going on. Why are they crying? Um, and having someone who's on the same path with you is so important. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I uh, my best friend had her baby, and she knows that I'm on the fence about having kids. And I'm just like, look, dude, seriously, you know me like better than anybody. What are you thinking? And she's like, you should be a hundred percent in because this is hard. Yeah, <laughs> this yeah. is hard. Yeah. And she knows me, so I'm like, okay, I don't like. I'm I'm so on the fence still that hearing all this, I have an enormous amount of respect for how much work this is, and what a huge responsibility. And I just feel like, man, if there's an ounce that I'm not fully committed, I fear that I will be a very, very resentful person. Same. And I would not want that. Yeah. And so I, I, I'm, I'm curious to know, any of our listeners, if you were on the fence about having kids and did it anyway, how are you feeling? Did that yeah. change? Are you secretly still upset and you can't talk about it? I would love to hear um, from people who are yeah. in that position. Yeah, definitely. But... 
Yeah. yeah that's Thank you at. so much, Monica, for this was so God, good. You, yeah, this is yeah. great. Blew our minds. Uh, <laughs> we just appreciate it a ton. Yeah. Do you, um, do you want to plug anything on any like great resources that helped you during pregnancy or post pregnancy? Anything at all that you want to share with people? One of the things, like one, I always look for like who else is going through a pregnancy and or like mom wife and is telling me the real story and not like pregnancy is the best thing. It's so wonderful. Um, and one, you gotta have a good tribe. Like you guys had that episode about finding mm. your tribe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. you gotta find someone. And I think I'm lucky enough that I have sisters and friends. And one of my friends, she has a a three year old and a one, almost two year old. And she writes this blog and it's called beyond the post.net. Oh. And she documents like all of the, so it starts out with like, you know, the pictures that everyone posts on social media that are, you know, happy and everyone loves each other. And then she tells the real story about like, well, we thought about this right before the media or the picture mm. was taken and this shit storm happened. Um, so she has one about her son wanting hot wheels where she chucks the hot wheels off the car, but just, makes me die every time I read it so you got to find even if you don't have like a friend group who you can reach out to there are resources and our hospital was really good about it where they had a pamphlet that said here are support groups that are meeting and while it can be probably scary at first but going to those support groups and meeting people who are in the same boat as you it just helps to go and talk and I feel like the United States sucks because in like other countries they have cohorts where while you're going through pregnancy you have meetings with families that are at the same stage of pregnancy that you are and then they follow them for like the first year of the kid's life I didn't know and it's like what an it's a great yeah what an awesome support system Um, So, yeah, you have to have some outlet, especially as a mom, where you feel like you've got all of these emotions and like physical things that are going on. Like you just I feel like women in particular are communal and you need someone to talk to about how much sometimes it sucks. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent agree. And you might yeah, get some join. questions in the self helpless Facebook group after this episode, so you might want to check it out. Thank you so we'll much. Do. Thank you. This was so this great. Was so great. Uh, you guys have no, I mean, I've been like fangirling out about this. One of my friends who introduced me to you guys, I called her immediately. I was like, oh my God, I got an email back and they want to interview me. And she was, we just were like two little girls giggling. <laughs> oh my God, that makes me so, so happy. So Aww, yeah, we really great. appreciate well, you I, doing it. You're welcome. And I feel like a special kinship to Taylor because I grew up, I'm still religious, but my mom and dad like, don't like cussing um and so in that email i was reading it back I'm like man i was really cussy like my mom read that so oh god <laughs> whenever <laughs> anybody starts a sentence with i feel a really kinship with taylor i'm like oh god i'm so sorry <laughs> i really apologize what happened to you yeah uh, i'm sorry you're the miranda <laughs> emotionally oh uh, god yeah that's so nice yeah yeah don't worry about being cussy we're yeah, all adults. This is the safe space you're a, for cussing. You're a space. mother, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Say whatever you want. Yes. yes. Please keep in touch Bitches. with us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> keep us updated on you and your baby and all that stuff. Um, thank you for being willing to talk about this. A lot of people are not. So yeah. Yeah. we uh, we uh, really appreciate you. Yeah. yeah. You're welcome. It was so much fun. I appreciate it. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Monica. All right, have, have a good one. Bye. Bye. Oh my gosh. She was awesome. She was amazing. She was great. I learned. I I thought I knew enough about <laughs> this stuff. I did not know enough. Yeah. I really I felt like, okay, I feel like I got a good grasp because we had Jesse on talking uh-huh. about postpartum not too long ago. Melissa just had a baby. I've been looking at a lot of stuff going on there. No, there's still more to learn. Yeah. 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 Wow. My mm. friend who had a, like one of my first high school friend who had a baby who I've met, um, he's like getting so like ripe now where he's like, <laughs> he, like laughs and smiles and he has expressions. He's not like just like a little bean. And so I think I'm going to visit him this weekend and I'm so excited. Oh, I'm so excited. It's adorable. I'm going to hold a baby. <laughs> I can't wait to hold oh a baby. That's so funny. Oh man. I sat by the cutest baby on a plane where this it was like the baby's first plane ride and i was sitting and there was another baby crying up uh-huh. towards the front and the mom to the baby goes don't be that baby and i was like 
I was like, honestly, ma'am, your baby's so cute. Your baby could be that baby. Like, <laughs> We have a beautiful baby. (laughs) And that baby was so quiet the whole ride. And I had to try not to stare at it. You're so nice. Because I'd be like, yeah, don't be that baby. Ah, For sure. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Straight up, Kaylee. (laughs) Keep a lid on it. (laughs) So funny. Oh, my gosh. Do we have some uh, some quick segments before we... So yeah, enough. I have a um a treat yourself slash defuck. Nice. So the treat yourself is that I made an appointment with a plastic surgeon to get these two <gasps> moles removed from my face. Wow. Oh my gosh! I have one in the middle of my <gasps> Not forehead. Not your lip one. Yes, my lip I one. Love your nice. lip one. Well, the lip one I'm getting it removed partly for medical reasons because oh. it actually has changed over the last oh. few years. Where that's like kind of there's almost like another like little ridge on the top of it, and I you know that's one of the biggest signs is like if it's changing that could be a problem um the one on my forehead i actually had removed like a decade ago but the um i went to a dermatologist and he just shaved it off and apparently when you shave off moles they can grow grow back which this one did Mm -hmm. um and then it's scar tissue and it's this whole big thing this one actually grew back bigger than oh no the one when i had it originally so anyway um i decided that i want to go to a plastic surgeon instead of a dermatologist because these are both on my face and the one especially on the edge of my lip is in such a i mean that's wow what delicate. like a delicate place yeah. Yeah. um i don't want a botch job no. i don't want a huge scar and so i'm going to like a beverly hills plastic surgeon um because he's like i guess known for it being very minimal scarring um does a really good job but um so that's my my treat yourself yeah. i'm nervous for it i actually can't do comedy for like two weeks after oh my it gosh. to like let it all heal mm-hmm. um but it's one thing i've been self-conscious of for so many years now and there's sometimes in certain light where it, you can't really see it in photos and then other times it just really stands out to me and mm. i really don't like it and i've had a couple of defuck moments recently with the moles i know i've spoken before on here about like people photoshopping jim norton's face right. onto my moles oh online my like God. people are people monsters are yeah um i Truly, I get messages at least once a week on Instagram in my DMs of just dudes being like, hey, like not trying to be rude, but like I just have to ask what's on your lip. What? Ew. I get messages. I mean, I'm telling you at least once a week. People Whoa. all the time, which again, it's just like who raised you? Yeah. Why do you think that that's OK to ask that? You know, so that happens or I'm you know, I've always been worried that people just assume it's like herpes or something like that oh because how often do people have a mole on the edge of their lip it's kind mm. of but it's so clearly thing. a mole it's not like a sore right exactly right. um yeah. anyway i i was a bridesmaid in my uh one of my what, sorry <laughs> skipping the track scatting uh one of my best friend's weddings a couple weeks ago and you know when you get ready for a wedding you you do the full thing i had like full hair done full makeup fake eyelashes and a dress i spent so much time getting ready and as soon as we walked outside the very first thing the videographer said to me was hey you have something on your lip (gasps) and it just made me so sad that even when i look my very best it doesn't matter how much is being distracted like you know my boobs out fake eyelashes the whole thing it's like that was the first thing the guy saw and i know that's part of his job to be like oh if they have food on their face i need to let them know but it's like, man, that bummed me out. Yeah. That yeah. that's the first thing his attention went to. So anyway, uh, he said that and I was like, it's a mole. And he was like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> like oh. you, you can tell it was just like not. Uh, yeah. Clearly it's it's something I deal with a lot. Yeah. And he kind of hit a nerve. But um, yeah, that's my treat. Treat myself as I'm yeah. doing that. And um, I'm really looking forward to it. That's good. Yeah. yeah, you have been talking about it for a long time. So yeah. I think it's a good idea. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Yeah. Anyway, Very nice. Keep you guys posted. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Taylor? Uh, sure. I have a defuck. Um, I had a, a very negative reaction to the new meds I was on, which uh, caused me to cancel shows, and I was in the hospital, and it was a big bummer. And people who have reached out <laughs> nice. uh, saying that they showed up to shows 
that I was not at in Ohio. I am so sorry. I feel horrible and I felt horrible for several days. And uh, it's tough because when you're having a bad, very severe chest pain, everybody's like, you, well, you said you have anxiety, so you're anxious. And you're like, no, I'm actually not that anxious because I'm taking a bunch of pills uh, that are making me not feel anxious. I'm just in pain. And then you stop taking the pills. And then uh, three days later, I wasn't in pain anymore, but I was on the verge of a panic attack uh, just immediately because I had been on this thing that was like numbing me for mm. almost a month. Oh. So so that was just like a whole thing and uh yeah it's just the med stuff is uh is a real trial and error and it's very frustrating and i i did cancel a couple weekends next month um i canceled one initially and then the bookers reach out like hey just so you know we have someone else who could fill in for the other one which i appreciated and um it's tough because i'm prepping for this big thing that i gotta do in november and uh i'm uh yeah, we're just, you know, if any in the Facebook group, if anybody has any experience with this or any uh, whatever, like I just got prescribed Klonopin, which I'm terrified of. So if anybody's done that, because I have talked to people who said they used it and it was great if you're just careful. And I'm, uh, yeah, just kind of in the middle of it right now with all that stuff. And we're figuring it out and it's all necessary. And, y you know, you're going to grow and be better people for it. But yeah, that was kind of a defuck moment uh, recently and uh, yeah. a sort of continuing defuck moment. But that's kind of part of, that's part of uh, self-care in general is just finding yeah. out what works for you and uh, trial and error and what you can do and what you can't do. And medicine is so weird and everybody's body is so different. And yeah. um, you just, you just never know how you're going to react to stuff. And uh you know, for some people, it's like a huge lifesaver. And then for other people, it's like, that just doesn't work for me. And I can't mm -hmm. do that. And I got to do other things. So that is what I'm figuring out right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You'll get there. Yeah. yeah. It'll happen. Sending you warm thoughts. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, I got a, I have a good shit. I recently took a little girl's trip uh, with my best friend, Melissa. We went to Temecula for some wine hey tasting. Hey, 951. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor stole the stopping ground. Yeah. <laughs> my, we, my origin place. <laughs> we're like, we're somewhere we can get totally hammered during the day and people will judge us less for it. Wine tasting. Let's Absolutely. do that. Yeah. So yeah, we, we rented a very nice Airbnb with like this beautiful like infinity looking pool with a great view. And we did some wine tasting and went out to some some nice dinners and it was just really fun it was her first trip away after being a new mom yeah. um so it was her first two nights away from her adorable little baby mckenna Aww. and um yeah it was just very nice like to have that time i think you realize like when we as we get older we we you know they're not always a priority going on trips with your friends and i feel like it's just so necessary to do that we've talked about this a lot it's like yeah you just realize how starved you are for that time when you're doing it. You're like, yeah. gosh, we need to do this like once a month at least. And then time will go by again. We're like, why do we keep putting this stuff yeah. on? Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're just like trying to be much better at like making an effort to, to do stuff like that. But mm -hmm. I had nice. a really nice time. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it was fun. Well, thank you guys so much for listening. Make sure you give us a five-star rating and review on iTunes. It helps us a ton. And uh, this episode comes out on Labor Day. Um, I'm going to be headlining the Comedy Underground in Seattle, September 26th through the 29th. Um, and then for Denver people, I'm going to be headlining um, the Comedy Works in Denver, October 13th through the 17th. Oh, hell yeah. So come out to that. This weekend, I am at the Punchline in San Francisco, the 4th through the 7th. Uh, next weekend, I am running, uh, they are in town. So Ice House in Pasadena, the 13th and 14th. And then I'm at Cabo in uh san diego on the 15th cool yeah. and i just want to shout out one of my consulting clients jen chapman she's an incredible plant-based uh coach and consultant and uh she just is the best she does one-on-one -on -one coaching she does uh consulting for businesses and stuff so if you're curious about how in the world do you even go plant-based like where do you start uh she can help you with everything not just like recipes and food but also like mindset and just like dealing with talking about it and all that stuff so go follow her she's got free recipes she's got all kinds of good stuff she has an incredible story about how she healed herself with a plant-based diet uh, by boosti boosting her immune system and everything i just love her so much you can follow her on instagram at underscore sweet vegan underscore uh so shout out to jen and if you're curious about creative consulting you feel free to find me on instagram at delaney fisher you can message me and i'll send you the info to see if you would be a good fit for Sweet. it all right we love you guys thanks for listening love Thank you, you. Bye. bye bye
You guys, we love you so much. Thank you for supporting Self Helpless. You can follow us on social media, on Instagram and Facebook, at Self Helpless Podcast. And you can visit selfhelplesspodcast.com for all things Self Helpless. Learn about Patreon and how to sign up. Our merch is there. Information about our Facebook group and how to join. All the episodes you can listen to are on there. A little bit about the show. Our individual sites are linked there. And our contact information, email, and P.O. box if you want to send us some love letters. And (laughs) you can follow us individually as well. I am at Delaney Fisher on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And DelaneyFisher.com where you can watch my docu-comedy special, Love at First Cousin, for free. And then DicksByDelaney.com if you want to buy some dick mugs. Sweet. I'm at Kelsey Cook Comedy on Instagram, at Kelsey Cook on Twitter, KelseyCook.com for all tour dates and merch. And my album, Savor It, is still available to buy on iTunes. And you can watch Wrists of Fury, my foosball web series that has an episode of Taylor and Delaney uh, on the All Things Comedy YouTube channel. I am at Taylor Tomlinson on Twitter and Instagram and ttomcomedy.com for my Netflix special and all live tour dates. Sweet. We love you guys. So much. Yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.